Alright, in today's video we're going to do a visual representation of stress concentrations by looking at a few different geometries with a few different force situations applied to them. First, if we just consider a regular rectangle, let's pretend this is a beam with no stress concentration. The direct stress, meaning in line with the forces, whatever that may be, is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area. And this cross-sectional area is perpendicular to the forces. Here I've drawn what the force distribution would look like for perfect rectangle in tension as long as the force is contacting all these sides, like that. Now let's consider a rectangle with a cutout. This is like a half circle cutout. And we apply forces to all the sides along here. In this case, we've got one near perfect one at the bottom then at the top what's going to happen when you're pulling here these forces cannot be transmitted through this hollow part so instead they're going to loop around like this now the one below it also has a hollow part so it's going to loop around like this and this one may be slightly disturbed but it will pretty much be straight this is a very rough sketch but the main thing to consider is if you were to examine right here the force vectors are not that close to each other. These lines have a good spacing in between them. But right here, these lines are very close, right? So that means that there's a higher force is right here. And using our stress formula, we know that the higher force, the higher stress. So the stress concentration will be right here. And if I was to pull this thing apart, let's see where this breaks first right there in the stress concentration. Alright, now I want to consider two very similar cases, both perfect rectangles with notches. However, you may notice that the notches vary in uh, draft or whatever you want to call that. One is basically a steeper indent than the other is more gradual. So what do you think is going to happen between these two? You can probably identify that the stress concentrations will be right here and right here because the forces on the outside have to loop around these side by side. So they've got equal amount of forces on equal size. Let's pretend that they're the same width, same length, everything's the same except for those notches. This one is a larger draft angle than this tiny one. Now if we consider this one, the forces over here have time to start curving right here. Because this draft angle is out like this, the forces over here know that they have to start finding another bit of material all the way out here. So that means that they can be more gradual lines compared to this material. Because the draft angle is not all the way back here, it's only to here. At this point the forces have to curve around which causes them to be more sharp angles. Which causes them to be more dense. So the steeper the notch is, the more dense that the forces are going to be here. For that reason, I believe that this shape here would be more prone to failure here at a lower load than this one right here in tension. So by that logic, the more gradual we can make these indentations, the better it is from a stress concentration perspective. Let's say that we could even start here and do a very, very gradual slope that's much better than for example having a stress concentration like this where you've got a very very sharp notch much more easy to rip all right here we've got two pieces of paper this is a slight variation but let's say that the forces are in this direction in tension here we've got a perfect circle or close to it in the center of the page and here we have a diamond shape with the sharper edges being perpendicular to the force directions. Now if we pretend that these are the same width in this direction, I believe that this one is more prone to failure because it has a sharper notch here compared to the circle's more gradual force distribution. Alright, the last case I want to consider is when we have a, thick, a thicker cross section and we want to work it down into a uh, thinner cross section. Basically, this could be a shaft, this could be a beam, or anything like that. Now, 
Here I've shown two options as to how we could get that. This one is about a right angle and this one is about, um, you could call that uh, a perfect circle for 90 degrees. So which do you think is better from a stress concentration perspective if you don't want this thing to break? We've got a predicted stress concentration here perhaps and maybe this one's around here but hopefully at this point you can see that over here the forces have a much more gradual route much more gradual path than over here where the forces coming from here have to do a hard 90 degree angle and as you can see it's much more dense here than in this section. So my prediction is that if I go like this, this will break here before over there. Of course, this is uh, pretty hard to do with paper, but let's give it a shot. Very hard to say. I'll see if I can slow that down. Chances are this paper broke here and then traveled up here. And another thing to consider, the reason why if you have a notch like this in your paper and you start pulling on this until it rips a little now where do you think the new stress concentration is now that we've broken this it used to be down here but now that's broken so the new stress concentration is at the top of this right here just before the spot is broken Alright, thanks for watching. Hopefully that gave you a good visual understanding of this to go along with some of your calculations if you want to make sense of this. Have a great day.